Louise and I are flattered that we would be considered larger cities. <laughs> uh, I'm amused when people talk about this is not rocket science because um, my husband is a rocket scientist. <laughs> and uh, he was working on the kitchen sink and not getting too far in the family said, you know, this isn't rocket science, I'm calling a plumber. <laughs> I'm the mayor of Urbana, and to sum up my job, my job is to count to four. I don't care how good the idea is, if you don't have four votes, it's not going anywhere, because we have seven council members. So I was asked by um, Mercy to um, talk about the practicalities of how we got to be a bicycle-friendly community in Urbana. And uh, when I got elected in um, 2005, we had um, of the seven council members, we had three devout bicyclists and two devout walkers. So we were, we were there with the four votes. And uh, we spent the summer, the city council and I spent the summer discussing the city's goals. And so one of the things that we put in was to have a bicycle pedestrian advisory committee. And that got created and one of our council members, Brandon Bowersox, is um, the chair of that. So we talked about pedestrians as well as bicycles at the same time. And of course, there's always going to be criticism. You can't please everybody. Uh, I still have a council member who is upset by the fact that we got an $800,000 grant to build um, a bike path in part of Urbana. <laughs> she thinks it was a waste of money. But we got the votes, obviously, on the city council. Well, that's part of it, but we also have a brilliant staff, and I see Jennifer Selby here, who's come from Iowa today. And uh, we have a lot of people on the staff in Urbana who are interested in bicycling, and she's the one that kind of um, led the way. And we, we got a bicycle plan, and we, in, you know, gotten an award, and we want to get to, I guess, the silver level, and maybe eventually the gold level. I think the, the role of culture is also very important. The question was asked earlier about Portland, Oregon, you know, why is it taking root there? Well, I, I grew up in Seattle, and I know that on the West Coast, and in Portland in particular, there's a very long history of environmental awareness. So that's what you're building on. And in Urbana, uh, the University of Illinois had bike paths um, probably 40 or 50 years ago. So there was a culture to build on. and. Um, Still, there are people that are upset when somebody calls me up and says, why did you do such a stupid thing as have a bike path on Silo Road? Then I start to talk to them about complete streets and uh, that we try to design things that will accommodate not just automobiles, but, but pedestrians and, and bicyclists. So I think there is strong public support. Um, it, it is easier, I think, in a university community because you have young people that are interested in these things and faculty people that are open to the idea. And I remember going, our youngest daughter was um, in Germany studying for a year and we went to visit her in Munster, Germany. And they had bike paths on the street and all people of all ages were riding day and night, um, all kinds of weather. And I was really impressed and I thought, boy, those Germans, they really like bicycles. And then I found out later that Munster was the bicycling capital of Germany. <laughs> uh, but they also have bike paths in, in Berlin. So um, we think it's a great thing, and uh, we're going to keep working on it. And I'd be happy to answer questions later, but I will turn it over to Mayor Coos. Thank you, Laurel. Um, I had a, uh, 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 some comments I was going to make today, and Mercy and I got together and inventory things in the community. And about an hour ago, I decided to throw all that away. So I, I'm going to be disjointed here, I think, a little bit, because something really has resonated with me here lately, and I think it's very applicable uh, to what's happening, uh, what we're trying to do with, with this group and the Bike Summit, and that is, is, is public engagement, civic engagement. And uh, the reason I asked Kevin uh, to come and, and talk as well today is because he's going to show you a textbook example positive civic engagement. And I think this is a very, very crucial thing. You know, as a, as a mayor and a lifelong resident and activist in my community and owning a bike shop, you'd think bike advocacy would be easy for me. It's actually hard for me because people immediately throw the flag of, of self-interest. Anytime I talk about bicycles, they're like, well, of course you won't do that. You sell bicycles. And 
when I say it to my face, I say, well, if I were a car dealer, then I shouldn't vote for the annual street resurfacing, should I? Because that would be a conflict of interest. But, you know, the logic starts dumbing down from that point. <laughs> um, as an example, is Chuck Scott still here? No. Okay. Well, he's a council member in town. Um, by example, let me explain what I'm trying to talk about here today. Uh, the town of Normal was kind of late to the game for curbside recycling. Uh, we had a very, very uh, successful drop box program in the community, and it really kept us for, from doing curbside recycling in the community. And as mayor, it was probably one of the things that I was asked most for. When are we going to get curbside recycling in the community? Well, some things came together that allowed that to happen within the community. And uh, we went forward with the, with the program feeling very confident about the fact that well, finally, we can afford to do this, we can make it work for the community, and it's just a total no-brainer. Well, uh, at the city council meeting where we uh, took input on this issue, we had 10 people speak to curbside recycling from the general public. Nine of them were vehemently against curbside recycling. They didn't want any part of it. They were outraged that it was going to cost them $24 a year to have that service in their community. Uh, they felt it was government overstepping their bounds, and one person thought it was a good idea. Well, it knocked the council back on their heels a little bit because we're thinking, where are all the people that thought this was such a good idea? Uh, we finally uh, worked through the issues. We had probably more discussion than we should have had about it as a public body and got curbside recycling in the community. Uh, we, to date, have sold 3,000 curbside cards. Uh, which shows you the level of support in the community for curbside recycling. But the question is, you know, who got the upper hand in the conversation? It was those nine people who came to the city council because the press was there, the media was there. That's what they reported on because that's what was said at the public meeting. So I think in, in spite of all the education we do it with ourselves, uh, with all the uh, the work we do in, in Normal has got just a long, long list of, of cycling-friendly improvements that, that have been uh, put in place over the past 15 to 20 years. We've got an incredible trail network. We've got great bike parking. We're, we're starting to get some uh, share rows in the community, uh, things like that. But for us, as an elected body, to move this to the next level, we need you in your voice at the appropriate times. And I can't emphasize this more than anything. Uh, we have Friends of the Trail who has been, who's been very good at that. Uh, there's a new group called Bike Blown Up that's come out of an effort that Kevin's going to talk about, which is getting an advocacy group together. And I think it is critical that these groups get together and embrace their elected officials in their communities in a positive way. You know, ask them to go on a bike ride. Say, hey, hey, have you seen this new section of the trail? You know, it's three miles long. Can we take you on a bike ride along, along that section of the trail? Things like this are what make elected officials' uh, job easier and getting the, the kind of improvements that all the statistics, uh, Andy pointed it out, 83% of the people in the country want this, but there's got to be a voice behind it. And it's unfortunate right now I'm editorializing here a little bit, but at, at the local level in, in the two communities here, uh, it seems that the smaller but more vocal voice is starting to be able to carry the day more than they should. And so we need, we need that 83% or a representation of that 83% to engage us as elected officials in a positive uh, coalition building way, consensus building way, so that we can get these things done. Now, um, as Laurel said, uh, I think this is more of a, a give and take discussion, so I'm going to uh, pass this over to Kevin, but um, let's have a conversation about uh, civic engagement, uh, advocacy, talking to the elected officials, because this, this, we need to hear this from you and any ideas you might have that can help us get the things that you want are going to be very helpful. Um, again, Kevin Seuss 
cease, I'm sorry, from uh, Normal Community High School, was involved with a group of, uh, of uh, young people who, who got activated and um, made a difference. And Kevin mentored them maybe, but it was really a grassroots effort on their part to do something that was pretty magical, I think. So, Kevin? Thank you. Again, my name is Kevin Cease. I teach on the chair of Social Studies Department in the community. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about kind of how things came about with the group of students that, that started riding to school. So I think it was sometime in March in my advanced placement human geography class at Normal, where uh, we were in the economic development unit, um, one of the college board units that we, we have to teach about. And we were learning about economic development around the world, different countries, and it was just by chance that this film with my two wheels was going to be played in the normal theater. And so I, I decided to spend a little bit of time talking about bicycles, because it's kind of uh, key to uh, several other units that we get into as well. But as it relates to economic development, I, I looked at a couple things resource-wise from the World Bicycle Relief, who is part of that film and uh, showed some clips from that in my classroom. And by no means was I thinking, hey, we're gonna have a National Bike to School Day and get a trail extended to our school in the process of doing this. I was just trying to make some real, real world connections with my students based on some things that were going on in the community, um, get them to kind of reach out, get involved in that community a little bit more. And so what happened was, after I did some of those things in my class, I offered extra credits. The students could either donate a bike, which was part of the admission into the film, or they can make a donation of $5 to go see the film with my two wheels. And I went to it, I donated my old bike. I had the intention of starting to commute to work. So I um, donated my truck, got a new truck Soho, and ended up going, started commuting to work um, sometime in March. Kind of coupled with that, my students, just by their own volition, they, they decided to, um, from watching that film and kind of some of the things we've been talking about, decide to bike to school as well. And to kind of give you a little bit more information about our school, it's on the northeastern portion of the community, kind of on the outskirts, not very connected by infrastructure, no sidewalks, because the, kind of when the school was built 10 years ago, or roughly 10 years ago, uh, there, there was a deal kind of made in terms of putting money into the school as opposed to building sidewalks, because nobody thought students, high school students in particular, would want to walk to this location because it wasn't really conducive and most high school kids want to either, well they don't want to take a bus, but they either take a bus or they want to drive a car. So um, kind of that being said, um, we had some students then decide that they wanted to try and ride to school and it kind of started with just two individuals and if anybody saw them speaking this morning at the coffee house, they were there talking about kind of their, their process of doing this. And so they decided to bike to school. And as they started to do this, and as I started to bike to school as well, bike to work, uh, we noticed that there were some definite challenges with the location out there. There's no, there's no shoulder. Uh, the infrastructure is pretty uh, insufficient out there for pedestrians in, in all forms. And so we, we started talking about that, started thinking about what, what could we do to bring about some awareness in our community about the lack of infrastructure for pedestrians, for, for people that want to walk, for people that want to ride their bike. And so we did a variety of things. I met with them. We started to meet formally, and um, they came up with some ideas. They started kind of contacting some some media outlets, and then um, kind of things progressed from there. And then they got in touch with Mayor Coos and some other individuals. We got a great donation from a family in town for uh, for them to buy helmets and lights so they could ride safely. Uh, like everything seemed to kind of fit together nicely as as things progressed. And then from there. Um, we, we decided, we found out about the May 9th bike school day, so we kind of did a, f a few meetings related to that, tried to get as many students as we could, and community members, and we ended up getting over uh, roughly around 100 people to bike to school on May 9th, which is, some people would say, oh, it's nothing, it's whatever, it's a school, you see schools all around the country do that, but for high school kids in a, in a location like normal community, it's, it's, it's really, I think, a feat to see students take action. And so the mayor, they invited the mayor to ride along and he, and he um, was help, able to help us make a police escort. We had the media come and then the mayor made an announcement about extending the trail, the Constitution Trail to the location and help making some improvements to the location. So it was a nice uh, kind of culmination of things that I never saw, that I never saw coming and, and kind of came together in the end where students with their voices being heard and their actions that they took kind of 
they got some real results. So it was neat to be part of, and uh, we're hoping to see that continue throughout the, the next couple of years for sure. So I'm, I'm sure I'm missing some other things here in terms of a variety of things. I mean, it, it's, it's interesting to see kind of the final comments related to this, how the students have become activists. I mean, it's not by me saying, you should do this by any means, but it's rather, how can I help them do this? Because this was their idea, this was their goal to, to try to make some change, to try and get some more kids to bike, to try and bring awareness and do a variety of things that I thought was really neat to be part of. And, and so I've kind of been there along the way to help them facilitate that process. And it's, it's been an excellent process to be part of.